السلام عليكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I don't know where I should start uh, as you know as you see from my size very short man but it has given a long introduction which I do not deserve however given the topic I'll try to make as easy as possible. It's not a difficult topic, it's easy. Only thing I'll request you to follow and if you feel bored, raise your hand and tell me to make it more interesting. Uh, if it is very irrelevant, please tell me to change the topic. And if it becomes too long, I have requested Chairman to tell me to cut it short. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, Dias, mic, everything is too high and too long for me. I'll go down to the floor. I will make myself lighter, and I'll try to be interactive. To sweat less, I will uh, make myself light. I'll take out my jacket if you don't mind. Okay, uh, again, a very long topic for a short man, an innovative and integrated research approach for compound micro and nano machining. Forget about the long, title, but concentrate, please concentrate on micro and nano machining. And most important point, every one of us must be very innovative. And I'll touch on these, each point, what innovation, integration, compound, micro, nano, all full of all technical terms, I'll try to explain them in a, in a non-technical way. And I will try to talk about something may sound irrelevant, but I'll try to bring relevance to what I talk about. In life, whatever you do and whatever you should do, it should have some relevance in life. Otherwise, you should not do it. And there are basically three relevances, family relevance, community relevance, and professional relevance. If you do not follow the path, first of all, in the family, if you have, like me, three children or more, whatever number of children, husband and wife, parents, if any member of the family tells you, like, for instance, if your son tells, oh, my father is useless, or wife tells, my husband is a stupid, then you become irrelevant to the family. And I'm, I don't have to explain that family is a very unhappy family. And if it happens, you need to find out why they behave like this with me. Please try to go to the root of it. If it is your son, call him and ask him, what have I done, done wrong with you? Then I'm sure he'll explain to you, open up his mind. Then you become relevant to him, relevant to other members of the family. Um, my second, second son, I was also second son. I'm second son of, in my family. My second son was very violent, didn't listen to me. I was surprised. I was spying on him, he was spying on me. I called him one day and he started crying. I said, why are you crying? He said, this is the moment I was waiting for that you'll call me one day, why I'm behaving like this. You don't love me, you have no affection for me. I'm irrelevant in this family, everyone hates me. So I told him, same feeling I had because I'm the second son. You're also the second son. And I was always complaining. But one day, when I was having my nap after lunch, my, my father was talking to his friends. I like my second son the best. That day, my notion changed. I did not understand his love, that's all. So I explained to my son. He changed his attitude. I hope we are in a good, happy family. So let me not elaborate further. 
community, wherever you are, you should, everybody should feel that you are relevant to the community. You are a needed person in community. Very short and quick example, we live in Singapore. When we came to Singapore in 1982, there are hardly a few hundred Bangladeshis. And second language is compulsory. So I uh, took a move to the community with other friends that our children should learn Bengali. And Lee Kuan Yew, as the prime minister, we moved to him. We told him that please allow our children to learn Bengali. And you recognize Bengali as the second language because second language is necessary to enter into the university. He said, no, impossible. But believe me, we continued our effort. We were moving the school every Saturday from house to house. After four years, he called us, gave us a campus, and now it is recognized second language in Singapore to enter into the university. So community, by the grace of Allah, still respects me. They think I did something which is necessary for the community, so I have become relevant. So everywhere, please try to find relevance. I'll not elaborate. Most important relevance is professional relevance. That is what I'll be talking today. Professional relevance. Whatever is your profession, you'll have to think whether the profession needs me, whether I'm contributing to the profession. So all these are there. I will just quickly go through it. Uh, I give the example of my own life. When I studied, I studied uh, machine tools uh, in Tokyo. Uh, that, that time I did not know about relevance. I, I went to Japan to study management. My professor insisted that management is a God-gifted quality. If you have it, you'll flourish one day. You don't have to learn it. You don't have to read any book. But machine tool is a subject you must learn from an expert. And he claimed that Professor Ito is the expert in Singapore, if not in the world. So he, I can teach you what is machine tool. I tried to convince him many times. No, 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 I don't like machine tools. He tried to convince me, you came from Bangladesh, you worked for a machine tool company, how come you say you do not know machine tools? I said, I, I don't like it. He forced me, he said, I will make you up to your liking. Stay with me. So I said, OK. But now I have no regret. I feel really he taught me something which is relevant, which will remain relevant. And I'm happy that I studied it. Now, coming to that, so when I came to Singapore, I started teaching in NUS. Machine tool was a very glamorous subject. I started developing machine tools from cast iron, from concrete, whatnot. And I was quite famous in that time for developing machine tools with non-conventional material. Our machine tool made of concrete is still working very well. Okay. Then in five years' time, and I was getting a lot of grant. First year, I got $105,000. Nobody believed that a young lecturer can get such a huge grant. But in five years' time, when I was writing proposal on machine tools, no, no money came. So to get money, you need to know what is in the mind of the government, the funding authority. So I took a break. I went to Japan for two months. In 60 days, I visited 29 companies and tried to find out in 89, I, I tried to find out what research they are doing. And I found when I moved a big lab of Hitachi or Matsushita or wherever, in one corner I see things are covered. I would ask them, what is there? They'll say, well, uh, you're from Singapore, not important for you. So I said, OK, why not show me what it is? Very reluctantly, they would put out the cover and say, we are doing some micro-machining. So I pretended as if I don't understand anything. Oh, so difficult. Oh, OK, OK. So final visit was Hitachi Research Lab, where 3,000 researchers are working. And fortunately, the chief of the research lab also had his PhD from Tokyo Institute of Technology, where I studied. He was very really elaborate. He explained to me everything very open-minded. So I picked up the point. I promised him that I'll do my research in micro-machining. He was also happy. I came to Singapore. The chief came to Singapore after three months. He said, uh, can you do this nano-machining for me? I said, well, I do not know what is micro. You taught me. Now you want me to do research in nano-machining. He said, I will 
our lab will teach your staff you start it. So with that, is a, with that assurance, we took up the project. We wrote a proposal for $1.2 million. And they promised they will give us $400,000. So we wrote a proposal. Immediately, $1.2 million was granted. They gave four hundred. dollars EDB gave four hundred. dollars and US gave the remaining. So we got a huge project. And that was the starting point for our micro nano machining. Okay. So that way, when I wrote a proposal, I got the money 1.2 million. That means, that what does it mean? That funding authority found that I'm relevant. So I go start getting money. So that way, every time we need to do soul searching, whether we are relevant. If not relevant, forget about it. Money will not come, students will not come. So relevance in profession is very important. If you are in teaching, research, wherever you are, and when we talk about, everybody is now is talking about sustainability. If you want to remain sustainable, you'll have to be relevant. So to remain sustainable, you'll have to remain relevant. You need to remain relevant to survive. You need to remain competitive. If you're not relevant, competition. And all these are necessary to remain sustainable and to remain relevant. So I've spoken about professional relevance. And I come to other relevance. Those who are engineers, they go to the industry. Wherever they are working, they must be relevant to the industry. For instance, how to remain relevant. If you are in the industry, if you are another engineer doing what the others are doing, your boss has no special attraction for you. But if you are innovative, you, say, you develop something which is different, you question the current process and procedure, they will think, oh, this guy is very creative. So you'll have to remain relevant by being innovative. I will cover that innovation, why you should be innovative. And how to be innovative, I'll cover that. So I'm yet to come to the micro-machining. And when you're talking about teaching, and you'll have to have a project which industry needs it. Otherwise, as an engineer, you have no value. So you'll have to have relevance for research. You'll have to have relevance to the industry because they will have to use the result of this research. So you'll have to have mutual relevance between industry and profession. And then, of course, you'll have to be relevant to the thoughts and ideas of funding authority. So in every stage, you'll have to think whether you're relevant to the person, to the organization, to the authority. That is very important. That is my request to all young professionals, engineers, teachers, try to remain relevant. Think about it before you start anything. Don't do some, why you're doing because somebody else is doing. You don't do because it is, the, uh, it is ongoing. This is very glamorous. No. Will it remain, will it remain glamorous? You'll have to think. We are not prophets, definitely. But God has given us the capability to think what is needed next. Okay? I'll elaborate on that a little bit later. And where this relevance comes from? Relevance comes from necessity. You'll have to always think, what I'm doing, is it necessary? Okay. Let me give some quick background why I started my micro-machining. One is that Hitachi inspired me. Then I had to, when I was a young engineer, after my PhD, I joined Makino, Makino Machine Film Company. And I had ALSA because I finished my PhD uh, in the history of TIT in shortest period. My professor put it as a challenge. Nobody has done it less than five years. I said, sir, I'll try in three years. And I had, by the grace of Allah, I completed it, but I developed ALSA, serious ALSA. Then I joined Makino. Makino was, again, a very stringent company. My ulcer became worse. I went to see the doctor. The doctor said, well, lie down on the table. He tied my leg. He tied my hands. One guy was pressing my leg. Another guy was pressing my hands. And they put a clamp here so that I cannot bite. And they introduced a tube, which is called endoscopic camera. And that time, diameter was 10 millimeter. It was very painful, believe me. But I had to swallow it. Doctor enjoyed showing his internal doctors that here is severe, here is bleeding, here is so and so, but I was suffering. Then I could not say anything, I could not bite or do anything, but
but at heart I decided once the inspection is over, he gives medicine, I will swallow all this medicine, but I will never come back for second inspection. He obviously will ask me for a second inspection, whether I'm cured or not. And after two months, I was okay. Uh, but I didn't go back to the hospital. The doctor was calling me. I said I pretend a cold, fever, and so on, so that he doesn't call me to put it again. But he complained to my boss. He said, Mr. Sato, this foreigner, Gaijin, is not coming. Why? So I explained to him, it is so painful. I will die with it, but I will not swallow it again. So he explained to the doctor, and the doctor said, no, 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 don't worry. That time it was 10 millimeter. Now it is 2 millimeter only. Ask him to come. And I went there. And it was so peaceful because I didn't feel the pain. On the screen, I saw all my ulcer is clear. So double happiness. So that day I thought, as a mechanical engineer, I'm working in a machine tool company. We make things, machines, for others. Why not we make machines to make small, small things? So that smaller, it is better. Surgery will be easier. Inspection will be easier. Life will be easier. That is another serious point why I decided to do machining to make small, small objects. And for that, you need micro-machining. I'll explain that. So now I'm sure you are, com you are convinced that not because of my size micro, I do micro-machining because it is a necessity. So that is relevance. So relevance comes from necessity. Now, again, I connect to innovation. And innovation is what? You have necessity. You have a necessary problem. But you need to solve this problem. It may not, if it is a new problem, it is an old problem, somebody has solved it. It's a new problem, you will have to solve it. So innovation is nothing but solution of a necessary problem. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> What is coming up? When somebody says, this is an innovative project, what is it? Innovative project means there was a problem which others could not solve or has not been solved yet, and you have solved your problem. That becomes innovation, am I right? I don't need to explain. And whenever you can do some innovation, innovation is big or small, impact will be big or small. If it's a fantastic innovation, it could lead to invention even. But let us not talk about engineers never get Nobel Prize. So let us not talk about invention. We are all small improver. So let us talk about innovation. And if you can improve, if you can solve a problem, you can develop a new product, new product which is relevant. And you, if, if you are innovative, you can improve efficiency and a lot of other things. I don't have to elaborate on it. So you need to be innovative. Now, the question is, can everybody be innovative? Is it a God-gifted quality? My question to you, is it a God-gifted quality? Or everybody can be innovative? I think everybody can be innovative. Those who come for engineering, Allah has given them enough brain, they are definitely above average. If so, what they need to do, they need to Think about it. Problem is there. There is a story attached to it. I will skip that because time will be short. If you know a problem, believe me, one of my Chinese students, very brilliant student, I told him, you are a genius. He said, he's very humble. He said, no, sir, I'm one-tenth of you. I said, no, you're ten times brilliant than me. What is the clue? He said, you'll have to think about it seriously. Engineers and, f sorry, physicists and mathematicians, they have all solve the engineering problems. We need to look into their solutions, into their books, and fit our problem to their solution, bring it to our problem and solve it. What does it mean? It means if you understand the problem, you understand the fundamentals, which fundamental is to be applied to solve the problem. Then you can solve the problem, you become innovative. And he has solved a problem which is Cutting force equation, which is a lot of assumptions. I gave him the challenge. He studied for four years. He has finally established a cutting force equation, which has no assumption. Such a brilliant achievement. Wonderful. So you, if you can analyze the problem, you know what is the problem. 
bring the fundamentals, engineering fundamentals, mathematics fundamentals, physics fundamentals, put them in, solve your problem, you become an innovator. You, you are not, you need not be a born innovator. Born innovator could be somebody, but if it is not polished, he does not remain innovator. But if you are not a born innovator, innovator you think, but actually you are a born in innovator, everybody. You solve the problem, you understand the problem, apply the fundamental, I'm sure I challenge, all will become innovators. Now, now, now on, let me try to talk to you about innovation. Believe it or not, I'll give examples after examples. When you get tired, you tell me. So this idea of compound and hybrid, mach hybrid micromachining is an example of innovation I'll explain. And I'll talk about, again, compound and hybrid machining for nano surface generation, nano particle generation, and so on. And uh, this one I'll start with development of a multi-process or multi-purpose or multi-process machine tool for micro-machining. And we have to develop the controller for it. And we have to develop one machine measuring device. This I'll cover on micro-machining. And I'll talk about nano surface generation using two processes, elite grinding and diamond turning. And I'll, I'll bring the examples in those things. Okay. Micro-machining, somebody may say, is it something new you have developed? No, it is not new. Micro-machining was there. People were doing micro-machining using photolithography on silicon substrate. They were using LIGA process. They were using focused ion beam. But if you look at the, these processes, you cannot have a three-dimensional structure. You, the object you get is very low aspect ratio, two times, maximum three times. And they cannot apply the same process for everything. So limitations are unlimited. So we thought, why not we try to make a breakthrough? Why not we use a conventional machining process? And that was my fight with uh, Makino. When I was working in Makino, micro-machining was in my heart. I told them, let us make small, small machines to do many types of machining. First challenge, they said impossible. Because conventional machining, which is standing milling, you cannot combine with EDM, wire EDM, and so on. And I said, why? No, 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 two different controllers, two different processes. I said, why? He said, no, 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 it can be done. I said, let us analyze. Then, and big machines, why big machines? Why don't you make small machines to make small things? They said, no, 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 bigger the better, more stable. I said, no, stability is a problem of control engineering. We apply enough control to stabilize it. Boss said, no, 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 no. And uh, at the end, I decided to give up and join NUS, where I have a lot of freedom, I can do whatever I want to do, if it is relevant. Okay, so I thought, I will try to reinvent the wheel, applying tool to do micro-machining and nano-machining. Okay, what is the conventional way is standing milling, micro-machining, mechanical process, non-conventional EDM, wire EDM. If we can combine all these, I'll show by example that we can make miracles, believe it or not. If you are successful, then advantages is that any material you can machine, material removal rate is much faster and high removal rate, and you can have 3D features, you can have multi-structures, you can, most important is that you can have very high aspect ratio. I'll show you how can we achieve 200 times aspect ratio, not two times or three times. And machining, most important is setup cost is very low. Buy a machine, which is $200,000, if, if it can do turning, milling, medium, wire EDM, name it, it can do, and at a very high uh, precision, why not? So I hope you are a little bit convinced that if micro-machining can be successfully done, combining all this process, that is the best. Okay. Now, we decided to do micro-machining. So now we need a machine tool. First of all, we looked into the market to do, to find out whether we have a machine to do micro-machining. And to do micro, you need an accuracy of nano. Otherwise, you cannot achieve micro correctly. 
and processes. I'll give some example uh, that is it easy to do micro machining? It's easy, but again, you'll have to make innovation. You'll have to make breakthrough. Processes are slightly different. And another important thing is that machine should have metrology on it. Conventionally, what we do? We do the machining. We take the object to the metrology lab, measure the dimension, bring it back, and we redo it. But when the object itself is 100 micron, and it is 10 millimeter long, you remove it, take it to the metrology lab, measurement found that one micron wrong, bring it back and clamp it, then accuracy is gone because clamping error is tens of microns. So you'll have to do everything on the machine. And process also, also I give an example, process also, you'll have to combine it. Otherwise, you cannot do micro machining. That I mean hybrid or compound. For example, somebody asks you to make a 50 micron hold, and there is no tool to do 50 micron drilling. It was not available, now it is available. So what we did, we were doing EDM. <clears throat> so maybe we bring an electrode, which is 50 micron in diameter. We clamp it in the spindle and rotate it and do EDM. So clamping error may be few micron, and if it is 200 millimeter long at the tip, error is few hundred micron. When you do EDM, you get a hole which is few hundred micron. 50 micron electrode, few hundred micron hole. Okay, so you'll say, no, I will use a guide. But guide has a play, so you'll never achieve correct hole. On the contrary, if you have a machine which can machine this rod, which is, let us say, 45 micron, and on the same machine, without changing the setup, making the rod, if you bring the tank below and then do EDM, there is no clamping error. If the electrode is 45 micron, your hole is guaranteed to be 50 micron, even 48 micron, 49 micron. So I'm sure you're convinced that if a machine can do tanning and the same machine can do EDM in the same setup, then your micro-machining problem is extensively solved. Agreed. If you don't believe, okay, I give in, into more detailed examples. So we were looking for the machine, it was not available. We looked into the whole market, I'll skip it. Nobody was making a machine which can do both tanning and EDM together. In Japan, Panasonic's, they were making micro EDM machine, but not micro tanning machine. In Germany, Kugler was making machines for micro milling, but not for micro EDM. So we thought that's a good opportunity, small country, we develop a machine which can combine all this together and hopefully it will be uh, well accepted and it is really well accepted all over the world. So we had to design and develop a machine. I'll talk something about the machine. I'll skip all these things. My conviction was that both processes can be conventional and non-conventional can be combined together. It has a lot of benefit. In one machine you can do five processes or six processes. You save money five times less space, less energy, but <clears throat> how it was done? Again, I go back. Fundamental problem is, one problem is stability. So I said, well, I'll call the electrical engineers to solve it. I had a fantastic electrical engineer, Dr. Lim from Korea. He said, oh, stability, leave it to me. Design, I did it. Then comes to the controller. Again, we took the controller, uh, Professor Pu, who's a famous, guy in control. So we formed a team and we solved all the problems because we tried to find out where is the problem? Can we be innovative? Can we solve this problem? And these problems were solved. Finally, I'll skip all these. And finally, oh, again, if you look at problem is that every machine has nothing but a source of energy, either a tool or a beam, and XYZ movement. See, if you know that, then combining together is not a problem at all. So we got a small machine, ultimately, which is high accuracy, must be to do micro-machining, accuracy in the order of nano. It has less, less number of setup, minimum idle time and all these things. I'll quickly skip, I have already spoken. It has all the benefits, 
And finally, we developed a machine. We called it world's first integrated multiprocess machine. It's a miniature in design, low noise, low heat generation, high resolution. It was 200 micron. Now it is, sorry, 0 0.2. Uh, now it is uh, accuracy. You can control up to 2 nano. Though we assign it to 10 nano, it can do, name it, it does it, micro EDM, micro ECM, micro milling, micro turning, micro drilling, name it, it does it. If you say that I don't believe it, can I give an example? University of Malaya is using it. You can ask, uh, they'll tell you. Mr. Mr. Azuddin Mamat is here. He's a user. International Islamic University is using it. India's 16 universities are using this machine. In Japan, Panasonic is, is using it. University of, University of British Columbia in Canada is using it. Korea National University is using it. So everywhere uh, we are getting quite popular. So this is the machine which can do micro machine. This is the machine. It's a small machine, casing is big. It can do micro turning, micro milling, and uh, it we can change the spindle, micro wire EDM, micro EDM, everything it can, it, it does. And it has on machine measuring device as well. Everything is there. I'm not advertising for the machine, but I'm saying that if you have a machine which can do everything, you can solve a lot of problems. Now I'll come to the problems. Controller is done. And accuracy, controller is so accurate. If you look at this hole, conventional EDM process, it's a 50 micron hole only, thinner than our hair. But if you magnify it a few hundred times, you see erosion marks. But our machine, this is the hole, 50 micron hole, you don't see any bars or anything. The controller is so accurate. We had to develop it. And this is a wire cut example. I'll explain some hybrid processes. Can it be really done? I'm not putting you, uh, uh, giving you a problem to solve, but if somebody asks you to make a 50 micron shaft by turning process, can you do it? Quickly, I'll finish this example. I had a top student from IIT Delhi came to my lab and said, sir, give me a challenging project. I said, okay, make me a 10 millimeter long shaft, which is 50 micron in diameter. Stop to, top student from IIT Delhi, one of the top students in the world, he jumped and said, impossible. I said, hey, guy, sit down, sit down. A supervisor, a professor will never give a problem to a student for which he doesn't have the solution. He got a shock. He sat down and said, sir, can it be really done? I said, shall I tell you how to do it? I have not done it but I think it can be done. So he said, give me one week time, I'll think and come back. After one week, he came back. He said, sir, I don't dare to say impossible, but I think I cannot do it. He said, shall I give you the solution? He said, sir, do you really have the solution? I said, are you fooling me? Then he said, okay, give me one more week. After one week, he came back and said, no, sir, I cannot do it. I explained to him, again, I explained to him the fundamental thing. Why you cannot do it? He said, sir, if we do turning like this, it will bend. I cannot do machining. So I said, you know the problem now. If you can stop bending, you can do it. Then how do I stop it? I said, hey, you know the material properties. If it is whatever material, brass, silver, copper, you know for what strength, how much will be the bending. And there are two bending, one is permanent, one is temporary, elastic and plastic. If bending is within elastic zone, then it will come back, spring back. So you don't apply a force which will cause plastic deformation, you remain in elastic region. He jumped and said, sir, I have got the solution. It is simple because for what cutting force, for what depth of cut, what feed, what will be the cutting force, we can calculate. If you can calculate, then we know for a 50 micron shaft to remain within elastic range, what should be the cutting force and what should be the step size? If we know the step size, every time we machine that step, go to the next step, go to the next step, go to the next step, then you can have unlimited length until and unless because of centrifugal force it bends. I hope you got the solution. And machine must be very accurate, otherwise you'll see step mark. So that way he jumped and went back and he did it. In two weeks, he completed the machining 
wrote a fantastic paper. And this thing, when Moriseki of Japan came to me about Mr. Mori, he came and saw this job. He did not believe that it can be done, done in tanning. He asked me to patent it. I said, no, it is so simple. But he said, no, it cannot be simple. Show me how you did it. I showed him. He said, no, it is so simple. So the thing is that fundamental problem is that bending. But if you know what is the cause of bending, can I limit that force for bending? How to limit that? That is fundamental equation. I solve it and do it. So again, understand the problem, apply the fundamentals, solve it, and you become innovator. And these are the shafts you can see all done. And if you try to do it along this, every time you do one pass, you cannot do it. But every time you do one step, one step, one step, you can do it. Simple. And step size, you'll have to calculate. And you don't have to worry. You prepare the program, put it to the computer, NC controller takes care of everything. At the end of five or six minutes, you get your shaft done. Okay, so all these calculations I'll skip, and these are the jobs done here. 50 micron shaft, 10 millimeter long. Can you imagine, this is a three millimeter pin with so many features in it. And it was judged, it was published in General Machine Tools and Manufacture, judged to be one of the best paper, and one student got his master's degree for it. Okay, now, we are very happy, Mr. Mori was very happy, he went to Panasonic Japan and said, Raman has developed a fantastic machine, you better buy it. Panasonic came, we are so excited. Panasonic will buy our machine. But the team of engineers came. They say, well, we will buy your machine, but we will have to solve another problem. What is that? We are very happy to have 50 micron shaft. Using that, we made 52 micron hole. They say, no, no, no. You will have to make a 10 micron hole for us. I wanted to say impossible. But I scolded my student for that. How can I say them impossible? I'm sure they have the solution in their mind. I told them, could you please tell us? They say, no, if we know the solution, then we can do it. Why should we tell you? But I'm sure they had the solution in their mind. They had, did not have the machine. So they gave us three months' time, and I told, I called my engineers and students to do it. They, everybody said, impossible. I said, hey, guys, don't say impossible. Think about it. And they solved it in two weeks' time. Now, if someone can volunteer to answer, I'll be happy. I don't have to talk about it. But if you do not volunteer, I give you the solution. Now again, I asked all my engineers, go back to the fundamentals, analyze it, and try to solve it. What is the problem? A tool has edge radius. And that edge radius, we say, oh, it's a very sharp tool. But you look at the edge, it is about 100 micron radius, like this. If you make a very sharp tool. So when you apply this tool to cut it has two components of cutting force, feed force and radial force. The radial force causes the bending. So if you can bring the nose radius, edge radius, to almost zero, then your radial component will become zero. So there won't be any bending. It will be straight, feed force only. So the student got excited. What he did, this is the diamond tool. Then said, sir, how to make this edge radius almost zero? I said, this machine can do it because this machine can do EDM. So apply EDM first to straighten it. They say diamond, how can it be EDM? I said diamond, it's, a, it's not natural diamond, 
it is artificial diamond, which has a binder, which is cobalt. Cobalt and EDM. So every time going back to the fundamental, EDM on the cobalt and edge radius was made straight like this, and machining was done. Finally, I'll skip all these details, all these tips. They got a shaft which is 11 micron in diameter. Now, 11 micron shaft, if you try to drill a hole by EDM, it will be 12, 13, 14, or 15 micron. So the problem is still remaining. And then the student said, sir, then I said, apply EDM on it. Wire EDM or block EDM, I will not elaborate on it. By EDM process, it was reduced to 5 micron, and a hole was made. All these processes are there. I will, this is the hair size and this is the rod after machining, after doing EDM. This is the process. After getting this rod, which is 11 micron, we did block EDM on it. On the machine, we measured the diameter and reduced it. After getting this rod, using this rod, we did EDM, and this rod was reduced to 5 micron, and the whole machine was 6.5 micron. Now, midnight, 2 a.m., my student called. I was so annoyed, I thought of scolding him. I said, hey, why did you call me? Sir, I had achieved it. So I was so happy, I praised him. I said, what is it? He said, sir, I got 6.5 micron, smaller than blood cell. Then I said, it must be fluke. He said, no, sir. I have made 8.5, I have made 10.5, I have made 12.5. You name it, I do it. So again, innovation. We apply a difficult problem can be solved. So this is the whole. This is a milling example. Uh, last night I tried to incorporate an interesting slide. I could not do it. Uh, <clears throat> this morning also somebody was asking me, Prof, are you in materials? I said, no, I'm not a material scientist, but I need to know material because I do machining. If I do not know the material, I cannot machine it. We have started a new project, i just tell quickly, that you can machine glass using milling cutter. And the chips are continuous chips. And tools are tungsten carbide or CBN. To cut glass, you don't need diamond even. The fundamental is that, believe it or not, even material scientists do not believe, every material, even a brittle material, is not brittle. It has a ductile mode in it. If you can find out the ductile mode of a brittle material, you can use any tool to machine that. It is as soft as steel. But to find out the ductile mode, We'll have to do some calculation, apply the fundamentals at what depth of cut, at what feed, what speed. You can touch the ductile mode, then you can machine glass. Unfortunately, I do not have the slides here. It is in the internet. Okay? Uh, you can machine all these rods. You can see on a six millimeter diameter rod, you have so many pins. Using this pin, you can use as a punch, you can make metal filter. This is another example. Uh, EDM process I've explained. There are various EDM processes. Let me quickly ex skip those. And this, some exam this is a metal pyramid. Top is 25 micron by 25 micron. Steps are of 7 micron. And you can see you can machine such an object. And this is, I feel I'm tempted to tell this. There are two slots, each one is 12.5 micron, and the wall in between is 2.5 micron. Imagine 2.5 micron, but it didn't break. I'll skip all these. Quickly, I'll go to another example. Uh, ECM is also applied to machine uh, to make micro molds. I'll skip all these, not to make you boring. This is a little interesting. Machining of glass. We have uh, developed two processes of machining of glass. You can do grinding of glass. It's no problem. But how to cut a slot on glass? And our fluid mechanics division came and said, can you cut 200 micron slot on glass? You say you do micro machining. That was a big challenge for us. How we did it? I told you that polycrystalline diamond tool, we can do EDM on it. So it's a PCD rod, which is one millimeter in diameter. Using wire EDM, 
we slowly reduce the diameter. And from one millimeter, we can go down to 80 micron even. After you got this, then do milling or grinding, whatever you name it. Then you can machine glass. So machining of glass is no problem at all. Here, we got a very clean surface, nano surface, and we have written NUS on glass. And slot with each slot is 150 micron, and depth is 50 micron on BK7 glass, which is widely used in industry. And if you look at the surface, nano finish surface, this we got by fluke nano surface, but now we generate nano surface intentionally by milling process. That one, I'm sorry, I don't have the slide here. And we have the on-machine measuring device based on two processes. One is based on laser diode, another by CCD camera. We use the CCD camera for this mainly. These details I did not need to explain. Too much time, it's good. Okay. okay. Now I'll talk about nano surface generation by using conventional machining process, but again, it's a compound, compound process. By elite grinding, okay, why we need elite grinding? When you do grinding, what happens? Usually, very hard material you do grinding, the particles from the workpiece gets into the wheel. So wheel gets loaded. So the loaded wheel, if you try to do grinding, then you get a surface rubbing, not actually cutting. So we call it it's a loaded wheel, and we get a glazed surface. And the problem is it has, sorry, sorry. If you take the case of silicon grinding, wafer, silicon wafer, and it has seven processes. All these are grinding processes, and it's a random process, and you get subsurface damage, which is micro cracks inside. You don't see it, but under very high power microscope, you can see micro cracks. Silicon wafers, you know that only 40% of silicon wafers after machining is accepted, remaining are thrown away. But we thought, can we do something about it? It's not our idea actually. It's Professor Nakagawa from Tokyo University, he started the process and we are very closely working with his disciple, Dr. Omori. I'll skip this basic things. This is the process. What is this process? You have a grinding wheel, which is diamond wheel. Diamond particles are bonded in cast iron. Why on cast iron? When we are doing grinding, we carry out electrolysis on the wheel. So when it is grinding, fresh wheel, it is grinding, particles get into the wheel, wheel gets loaded, we carry out electrolysis. Electrolysis causes a fine layer of rust on the surface. Fine layer of rust, which is ferric oxide, quite soft. When it goes for grinding, the soft layer breaks off and it takes away all the debris. So every time you get a fresh diamond particle to do the machining, very simple. So compound grinding plus electrolysis together. It's a compound machining and I'll skip all the details. And it's a machining of BK7 glass, it was a PhD project. I'll skip all these, and finally, after all this trial and error, calculations and so on, we got a surface which is seven nano, but we are not very happy about it. We continue to improve, and finally, we got a surface which is uh, three nano. The surface, original silicon surface is like this. After machining, it is RU is three nano, and uh, charter semiconductor, it's okay. Chartered semiconductor needs 10 nano. We are giving them 3 nano. And we have developed a machine, and we got a project from India. I cannot name the research lab. 3,000 researchers have worked in a huge lab, national research lab, and they asked us to grind zero dua glass, and we achieved, they wanted 10 nano, we achieved 2 nano for them. And this is the surface. This is the process, this is the job, this is the machine. And uh, this machine is working in India now. Now diamond tanning. Diamond tanning is an established process. Many people uh, are using it in Japan and USA and Europe. In 
uh, this part of the world is so expensive machine, not many people are using it. Fortunately, Hitachi has helped us to fund this project. We have one machine, and we were doing nanosurface generation on, we are doing nanosurface. This is the machine, one nano resolution, and the surface roughness, they guarantee less than 10 nano. So this is the process. We tried it on two materials, silicon and electroless nickel. Electroless nickel plated dye material, and we use single crystal diamond tool. And uh, this is the job we are still continuing with Hitachi. We deliver them free of cost because they gave us so much money. And this is, this is the surface by polishing, conventional process. This is the surface we do by diamond turning. If you look at it, real ductile mode machining surface is really good. We can achieve up to four nano. This is the surface we achieved for Hitachi, which is four nano. Okay, now, one million dollar machine, <coughs> research lab cannot afford it. So this is the problem. We want to do nano, uh, that talbot machining, diamond turning, but machine is too expensive. This is a the problem. Then we try to analyze the problem. Why is it so? And details I'll skip. This is a small machine we have developed. I don't have to tell the price here. It becomes a sales stock. We have developed this machine, diamond turning. This this first machine is going to Japan to Panasonic very soon. And this is the machine. Now, what is the speciality? Can we make $1 million machine cheaper? Impossible. So one million, one million dollar must have some reason. Uh, so what we did, we said it's too sophisticated machine. Singapore doesn't have the technology to develop. What we had did, we took a normal, reasonably accurate, diamond turning machine. We got it made uh, from a manufacturer. We designed and did everything. On that, what we have done, we have developed and attached a fast and fine tool servo. What it does, it has two servos. One is the normal servo. Another is piezo actuator, con actuator which we control. So piezo actuator movement is 10 micron. Within 10 micron, we can control up to one nano. So main machine takes care of up to one micron accuracy. And on that one micron, we can control up to one nano because piezo movement we can control. And how we do it, some details of these devices here. I'll skip all these details. And if you look at the result, without this, without this fast and fine tool servo, if we try to do diamond turning, this is the surface roughness we get. First of all, horizontal straightness of the machine is about uh, 0.3 micron, which is not suitable for diamond turning. And after applying fast and fine tool servo, without applying the fine tool servo, we do machining on brass and aluminum. Our surface roughness, as you can see, is about uh, 0.7 micron. 0.7 micron. And then applying this fast and fine tool servo, I'm not going to details of it we can get almost zero roughness, which is two to three nano. And five nano is not a problem at all. Now, this is all these measurements. Since we have the fast and fine tool servo, which can be controlled within 10 micron, we can control the movement, even if it is a circular workpiece, we do turning. Turning, as you know, you can start from one end, bring to the other end, you can have a flat surface, you can have carved surface. But can you get a small circle in one place by turning? Everybody will say no. You can have, you can see hundreds of thousands of micrometers, micrometers, each of spherical shape, because you can control the tool on that spot, around that spot. And you can machine the map, you can machine a shape, you can machine a human uh, picture on a surface using this fast and fine tool servo. And very cheap. This whole servo device is 50,000. If you spend another 200,000 to develop the machine, in 300,000 you can have a diamond turning machine, which is even much better than the conventionally available diamond turning machines. Um, very quickly I'll touch on this. Okay, 
I'll skip this. You can reduce the cutting force to 50% if you can apply elliptical vibration during cutting. Cutting, cutting force is one directional. It has the thrust force, let us say thrust and feed force, and chips flow on the surface that gives the friction force. But it moves, and if it pulls out the chip, then you can reduce your cutting force by 50%. For that, we apply elliptical vibration device. I'll skip that. This is the whole thing. If you look at it, the tool goes, cuts, and moves out. It pulls out the chip. We are doing this research. All these theories I'll skip. Uh, I think I stopped here. I got the signal that. And the conclusion I need not draw, I should not read. I'm sure you are convinced that uh, micro and nano machining is possible if you apply compound and if you integrate them together. And any problem is a solvable problem. If you analyze the problem seriously, apply the fundamental knowledge on it, then you can, you can be an, an innovator. Everybody can be innovators. I give you a challenge. I'm sure you can face it. Thank you very much.